This is Grave Confessions from the Grave Talks. Daily, raw, real, and disturbing accounts of the living, interacting with the dead. To share your grave confession, experience with the paranormal, supernatural, or the undead, call toll-free 888-GHOST-13. That's 888-446-7813. Now, today's grave confession. Hi. Um, so I was just calling because I heard your podcast where this girl called in and she said she didn't know, but she thought she might be a sensitive based on what her friends were saying um, about her and things that she could sense and stuff. Um, after she told her story, you guys mentioned that there are lots of sensitives. There's probably way more than people even realize. Um, and so I thought I would call in and share my story of how I believe I became a sensitive and kind of my transition out of being a sensitive, um, because I think I was a hypersensitive actually as a child. If I, things. Um, I also want to tell your thoughts after hearing my struggle with sensitivity to the other side, um, what you think the point of being a sensitive is, what purpose it serves on the planet. Are we supposed to ignore the paranormal? Are we supposed to assist the paranormal? I just don't really understand, I guess, why certain people uh, can experience these things. Um, also, I was kind of plagued as a child with the thoughts that I may be schizophrenic because a lot of the things that sensitives go through and experience kind of align with certain types of mental conditions. Um, and the only thing that kind of kept me sane or believing I was sane anyway is that there were always third-party outsiders who confirmed what I was seeing or hearing um, or experiencing, which kind of helped me understand and know that this wasn't just all happening in my head. So anyway, um, from the age of 8 to 17, I was a hyper sensitive, I guess you can say. And um, after 17, it kind of died down, and I will get into why that happened in a moment. So at the age of 8, um, I remember uh, I didn't really grow up in a very, like, religious or spiritual kind of family who just kind of existed. Um, but at eight, I started getting really active religiously and going to church and stuff. And uh, I remember one night I was falling asleep in my bed and I look up and in the corner of my room, in each corner, there was a really tall, really, really dark one in every corner of my room. And I remember not really being scared. They weren't scary. They were just there. And they began talking to me. And they didn't actually use, like, mouths. They didn't have mouths. They were just, I don't know, just blobby shadows there. And just pitch blackness, but in a figure shape. Um, so they started communicating with me, I guess is a better word for it, and just became my friends. We would talk, and I don't know what we talked about. I was eight, so whatever, just. I guess whatever a shadow figure wants to talk about with an eight-year-old, weird. Um, but that went on, and my mom used to come into my bedroom at night, and she would just say, can you please be quiet? It's late at night. I'm trying to sleep because her bedroom, we shared a wall. Right on the other side of my wall um, was my mom's. So she would come in every night, and she'd be like, seriously, we'd just be quiet, whatever. And so I'm like, okay, I'll be quiet. And so I'd lower my voice and keep talking to them throughout the night, or I would just stop talking depending on how tired I was. One night, though, um, my mom comes in my room, and this is after we'd both been pretty active in church for, like, a while. And she comes in, and she's like, can you please be quiet? And she stops. And while she's telling me to be quiet, there's a figure right next to her on the other side of the door when she opened it. And I still saw the figures. They were still there. But my mom, up until this point, had never really seemed like she knew there was something else in the room. She just assumed I was talking to myself or imaginary friends. And so she asked me, she's like, who are you talking to? And I said, my friends. And she said, what do they look like? And I was like, well, they are really tall and really black. And there's one in every corner every night. And she kind of looks a little bit um, scared in, in hindsight. I don't know what I thought she was going through at that age because um, they didn't scare me at all at the time. But she was a little scared thinking back and looking at it, and she was like, okay, well, don't talk to them anymore. And then she shuts my door and leaves. So I tell my friends 
uh, the shadow figures. I'm like, okay, well, mom said I can't talk to you anymore. We can't be friends. So I'm just going to go to sleep. And they try to push it a little bit. And they're like, well, no, we have to be friends. We, we have to stay connected. And I said no, because at this time, I was a very obedient kid. So I just wasn't going to talk to them anymore. And then they got really mad. And I remember I went to sleep that night. But that next um, literally all hell broke loose on my life. And when I say all hell broke loose, I literally mean, like, they went from being just kind of let's just have conversations kind of beings to absolutely malevolent, like, incredibly crazy. It was the most evil, scariest situation I've ever experienced. And that proceeded from the age of 8 to 17. So basically what would happen is my closet door would open and shut all night long. Um, I would feel the sensation of spiders and bugs crawling all over me. Um, I would see just spiders everywhere now. It, was, it wasn't just in the corners of my bedroom. I would be waking up and going to school, and I would feel them following me. I would hear or feel breath on, the, on my left side. It was always on my left side. I felt something hovering behind me. Um, it was coming from my left side, which is really weird. And I would also... Um, see all sorts of figures rush by the corners of my eyes, things like that. It was really, really terrifying for a little kid to go through. Um, also experiencing other things, um, there were eyes sometimes that would stare at me out of my walls and faces, and sometimes they'd be really evil, um, and other times they would just be observing unblinking just faces that weren't really doing anything. Um, I also started experiencing, this is a part that makes me know that this wasn't in my head, this actually actually happened to me, was I started having psychic visions and dreams, and this part wasn't really that scary as much as it was just completely out of my control and something that I didn't know what to do with, I guess. Um, I remember specifically three examples of this in my life. One was um, falling asleep and having a dream where I woke up in my dream. I put on my shoes. I exited my house. I walked all the way downtown, and I stood in front of this building that was burning. It was on fire, and it was just this random brick building downtown that was just on fire, and I stood there forever just watching it. And then I turned around, walked all the way back home, and this walk were, took me down streets that actually existed, that I could not have known existed because I was like eight or nine. I didn't drive. So I don't know how I knew those neighborhoods led to that place. I don't know how I knew the path to go downtown at all by walking, but I did. Um, and I walked all the way back. And this dream felt like it lasted like four hours, which is about the time it would take me to walk downtown and back. And when I woke up that morning, um, the news was on. And my mom was watching the weather and things like that before work. And I walk in and I just stare at the television because on the news was a scene of that building that I had watched burn and firefighters were there now and they were putting out the flames. So it was almost as if that dream was happening in real time and I was actually there watching that happen. And there's no explanation for why I needed to know that information. It's super random and weird. But things like that and dreams and visions like that happened throughout my whole life. Um, my whole teenage life anyway, um, and I would, get, I, would, I would get psychic things and information about people that I didn't know, random strangers. I would hear like a whisper in my head that was telling me information about these people that I didn't want to know, um, nor that it really mattered to my life at all, and I just knew information about these people. I knew things like what date their anniversary was if they were married. I knew things like how many children they had. I knew things like their relationship with their father and their past and what their father looked like. It was all incredibly bizarre and all of it tied back to these figures that were just haunting my life. Um, eventually, at the age of 17, I got sick of it. I couldn't handle the voices anymore. I couldn't handle the psychic dreams and visions. I couldn't handle I was astro projecting to burning buildings. I just could not handle it for my own sanity and for my life. I sought help from a mentor that I had um, in the religious community. And this is a real weird thing, but apparently 
Um, there was a woman. We went to a uh, church camp one summer, and this is where I, I finally just broke down and confided in my mentor. And I was like, listen, this has been happening to me since I've been a little kid. I'm kind of over it. I don't know what to do. And I was expecting to be laughed at. I was expecting for her to order like a psychic evaluation, psychological evaluation of me. Um, and none of that happened. She was really understanding. And she's like, okay, I think I know someone that can help you. Um, she kind of experienced the same thing you did. So I went and saw this person and she lived, she happened to live a few minutes from the camp we were at. So we left camp and went and visited her. And she told me um, that I basically had a gift of being able to see spirits and that that's something that she could help pray out of me if I wanted that. So we sat there and she prayed over me and that was at 17 that that happened. And um, I haven't seen, I haven't seen demons or shadow figures or spirits ever since that day that she prayed over me. I still do get kind of prophetic and like psychic things, but they're definitely not as strong as they were when I was a kid. Um, and it's just, it's every once in a while, maybe twice a year or once, once a year will I get some sort of psychic vision or dream of something. Um, but yeah, that's my story of being a sensitive and it was a nightmare for me. I hated it. Um, and I just don't know, what do you think the point is? What could be the reason for that? Okay. Thank you guys. Your show is amazing. Um, I just discovered it recently and, um, I look forward to hearing more from you guys. Thanks. This has been a grave confession from the grave talks to share your grave confession experience with the paranormal or the undead call toll free 888 ghost 13 that's 888 446 7813